Welcome to A Taste of My Life, the show that takes a culinary stroll down memory lane. Everything we eat and cook paints a highly personal portrait of who we are. Food can be the key to our innermost secrets. By simply tasting the food of one's life, memories come flooding back, which is why we're going to be feasting on the smells, tastes and flavours of yet another high-profile life. Now, today's guest first came to prominence in Dance with a Stranger when she took on the challenging role of Ruth Ellis, the last woman to be hanged in this country. Hardly treacherous to face the mockery of a man. David. An actress of great range and diversity, she's intensely private and rarely gives interviews about herself or her life. Christ, he shall just bring him down because he'll never go back now. Look, just bring him down! Despite garnering BAFTA awards and Oscar nominations aplenty, she's thrown a few royal fits in her time. We've completely forgotten about those chaps in prison, haven't we? <laughs> what chaps? <laughs> yes, today's guest is Miranda Richardson. And so long as she doesn't lop off my head, coming up in today's show, Miranda gets extremely excited as I serve up the dishes of her past. <laughs> Friend and star of the bill, Roberta Taylor reveals the secret to Miranda's game pie. Do you recognise this, darling? <laughs> you got me into this kind of trouble. And actor Simon Russell Beale challenges her to make a Moroccan lamb stew. If you whisk those up, that'd be great. Yes, yes. Miranda Richardson, welcome to A Taste of My Life. I'm so grateful. <laughs> I can't tell you. Now, you were born in Merseyside, yeah. and you spent your childhood um, in, in Southport. Yes. Now, this is because I've never been to Southport. I mean, are we talking the idyllic seaside childhood? The joke in Southport was you could never see the sea, so you were a sand grounder. But what we saw was a strand of hundreds of dead jellyfish, and you'd see a little man with a, with a cart and a pony, and he was the lugworm man, and he went down at low tide, and he would dig down and get bring out these lugworms, and they were terrifying. They were like this long, you know. What do they do? The they sell them for bait, for fishermen. Okay. You know, so a great long black. I mean, Freudian nightmare. You were at home with now your mum Marion and your father William and your Alan. sister. He was known as Alan, William Allen. And um, my sister, Leslie. What sort of childhood was this? Comfortably middle, middle class, I suppose. We had a really nice semi-detached house with a big garden, which used to terrify me when I was little. I, I, I liked to terrify myself, go down, listen to the wind in the trees, you know, run back up the garden. There's one dish, maybe that Mum made or something, that has got a special spot. She would do something very clever with leftover roast chicken. She would put it in a sauce, and it was called, guess what? Chicken in sauce. And, <laughs> and it's, I still make it. If you're not using leftovers, boil your chicken with carrots, onion and herbs of your choice to infuse the meat with flavour. Oh, and don't forget, save your stock. Can we go? Yeah. Roar. Was it a very happy childhood? It was very comfy. And I think... Because
guess there's quite an age difference between me and my sis. I suppose I felt like I spent quite a lot of time on my own, but that's just not necessarily a, a, a bad thing, you know. I mean, it's yeah. where you, your imagination gets fired sure. up, you know. And did your father ever cook? He always maintained. He was really rather a good cook, but he was never allowed in them because it was absolutely a blatant lie. He'd bring home bargains. <laughs> Look what I found. From Oxfam and <laughs> and the supermarket, yeah, the sort of like misshapen, misshapen loaf or something like that. I mean, he remember one Christmas, well one Christmas he brought home a turkey, a three leg, oh no, a one leg, sorry, a one leg, two wing turkey. Oh, I promise you. And also, I got a wonky donkey. I got a I got a gift he'd found in in France, which was this <laughs> this toy donkey, and it never stood straight. <laughs> there was always something off, but he got it cheap, you know. So oh, poor thing. he was thrifty. That was your wonky donkey. My wonky donkey. So I moved out and I moved to Bristol and I did a succession of jobs badly. And Bristol's a really, in terms of food, experimental time. I was very experimental. I would eat almost anything, it seemed to me in those days. I mean, I even remember once, filled me with dread now, I even remember buying pig's trotters down the market because I thought, I ought to know how to cook. There was, there was a kind of, you know, you're, you're a girl in jeopardy, you're out on your own. If you have to, would you eat pig's trotters, you know? Mm. So I tried and it was disgusting. You then went, and what was your first? My first job. Yeah. I went to Manchester Library Theatre, and I was there for 10 months. So I've got a little message for you um, from someone from your early years, someone who actually you know very well. Ah. We worked in the theatre about a million years ago, a long, long time ago before she was this fantastic movie star. She had just moved into a new house and invited about 12 <laughs> people around just to kind of celebrate. And there was this enormous, fantastic-looking Billy Bunter kind of pie in a terracotta <laughs> dish. And I think, she's just moved. <laughs> we're surrounded by packing cases. <laughs> Do you recognise this, darling? You got me into this kind of trouble. It was one of these pies that I thought you'd slaved over, and you hadn't. But now I realise it's perfect for me. Too busy to shop, almost too busy to cook. I get one of these fantastic game pies. 12 people, 20 people, and everyone thinks that I'm Nigella Lawson or someone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Brush with egg, cook for one hour, and everyone will think that it's all my own work. <laughs> Delicious. Sometimes you get invited to dinner and your heart sinks, doesn't it? If I'm invited to dinner at your house, the only complaint we all have, it always comes very late. So if you could liven that up a bit, <laughs> eating at 10 o'clock, half past 10. You know, I'm very working class. I'm not so early. She's lucky to be cooked for it all. That's what I say. <laughs> well, you really do that. I do. Oh, look at that! Yeah. Oh, my own work. Work, I can tell. Delicious. And that's possibly the best tip in the book for game pie. Buy one. That's a bit of a cheat, though, isn't it? So you're your good friend? Uh, pardon? Are you a good friend? I'm a good friend. Yes, I think I am. I think I'm a, I'm a good listener. Now, one of your friends has actually been cooking for you. And, All right. Yeah, apparently they're trying to get their head round my recipe for chocolate brownie. Yum. Oh! Very 
engaged in life. You know, doesn't take things lightly. That's not to say that, you know, <laughs> she's not spontaneous or funny or, you know, she's all those things. But what I love about her is that she's such a kind of honourable, principled person. She's used to seeing me sitting at the table drinking wine and the girls <laughs> making their own stuff. <laughs> oh, I'd like to mix that. I'd like to lick the ball. Mm -hmm. She makes a real celebration of everything. I think she really lives her life very beautifully, actually. That's almost as simply as I can put it. Well, that makes me feel a whole lot better. <laughs> She's always so appreciative of things. I think she'd be delighted. I hope she'd be delighted. We're delighted, yeah. actually, to be part of this, because she means so much to us. Chop, 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 that we're melted. Yeah. I think that she has made me a stronger person, and I'd like to thank her for that. When I've had particularly oh. kind of bad times or low times, she's actually, um, once you've talked to her, you feel strong. Come on, I can't believe he's talking about me. How oh, fantastic. How gorgeous. Is. It's good stuff. Oh, it's good stuff. What sort of a cook are you when you're not entertaining? I make little little messes for myself often, but they're, they're nice little messes. I actually got a bit of a challenge from a friend of yours. A kitchen challenge. Okay, then. Hit me. All right. Oh, is it? <laughs> Look at that. Noble. God, how would I describe her? She's incredibly gentle. Good. Incredibly kind. Good. Um, she has this massive... Um, Laugh. ...set of loyal friends. She, she has a huge, voracious appetite for... Food. Anything, well, anything really. <laughs> She'll just look for the the odd angle of approach to her work. I think you can see that in Blackadder, actually, even in the day for the pocket stuff. I mean, the Queen is not um, <laughs> your normal bog standard Elizabeth I, is it? Really? <laughs> what I remember very clear is one particular, it must have been a summer's night, down in your place in the West Country, where you cooked me a great big pot of stew. <laughs> but I can't even remember what it was, but it was delicious. And I think it was lamb. There was a cold soup. So if you can whisk those up, that'd be great. So Simon will put down a challenge. He has. I mean, he sounds to me as if he rather liked the lamb, the lamb tagine. Yes, mm. yes. So, let's have a go at Moroccan lamb tagine, or lamb stew to you and me. So, Simon's challenge. So, the challenge, yes, is uh, lamb tagine with, uh, in this case, prunes. Um, you have to share a chopping board with me. Happy. Good man. Are you fussy cook? I'm very hard on myself about lots of things. And if I'm doing it for other people, then I'm much fussier. If I'm doing it for myself, less so, uh, you know. Um, you just get on with it. I just get on with it. Get in. Um, always wear jewellery. Um, if it's evening tide, then a bit of nail varnish sometimes, although it can come off in the pot, so not advised. Yeah. Um, but definitely then a glass of red wine. Hint, hint. <laughs> Right, so we've got an onion, and we've got two pounds of a uh, very beautiful leg of lamb, because it's lean and gorgeous. And then you're going to cover that, just cover that, with water. Am I sounding bossy? No. Now putting in 
um, two to three tablespoons oil. Just... So that's coriander. Uh, ground coriander. Teaspoon of ground cinnamon. <laughs> so we bring it up to the boil. Just like that. I mean, you know, we could get fancy and stir it round. The reward for this dish is, is, is very big for, for what you have to put in, I think. That's why I do it time and time again. I love it. I leave this, I leave this to come up. I shouldn't put this on yet, should I? What has it got in its pockets? It's got... I suppose. Utterly, utterly gorgeous. You would think with the fruit and then the honey. Mm. <laughs> the fruit and the honey. Very familiar, but frankly, it's not. Miranda, this is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, you can stay, my God. To hear that from Nigel, my my cup runneth over. Still to come on A Taste of My Life, Miranda's Oscar-winning makeup artist rustles up a souffle or six. She reveals Hollywood's desire to always typecast her as a woman on the edge. Well, there you are. They just want me to be a knife brandisher, really. That's that's what they'd like best. Mm. And Miranda tucks into a very fragrant final feast. I'm already in heaven, Nige. So your first major film part came along. It was the wonderful Dance with the Stranger. My agent thought that I was somebody who had reinvented myself in the way that Ruth Ellis had. I don't know where he got that idea from, but I'm glad he did. I picked it up in my camera club days. But we had to share a bit more than leg. It must be a slightly intimidating part. And we're talking about, you know, the last woman in Britain to be hanged. Mm. Um, and she was, of course, this, I think she was platinum blonde, wasn't she? Mm. She was quite... Yes, I had to go through all that. The blondness yeah. had to be kept up and everything was perfect and the lip lines had to be just so. And... I mean, you have done some incredible film parts. I was thinking of, of, of Sleepy Hollow. I'm thinking of, yeah. of, of Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. When you played the Queen. Yeah. The Queen there. Um, and, you know, of course, later on, in Queenie and Blackadder. Mm, a lot I of mean, queens. I mean, if something's well written, I just feel like I'm on some sort of um, joyride, really. You also get, as you touched on, the, the, this um, wonderful opportunity to wear gorgeous costumes. You've had some fabulous... Yes. Well, in Alice in Wonderland, I had this underdress, which was something that ought to have come from Comme des Garçons, actually, because it was, it was a, a navy blue underslip, so the whole thing would sort of go like that, and you'd go like that. <laughs> Let the whole thing out. You could kill somebody with that dress, you know. Oh, sinister dread again. Mustn't say that. And the people that you work with, the people who produce all this fabulous makeup and these costumes, it, it's a very special thing they do. I mean, mm. must... I actually have got a message for you. Oh. from one of the very, very best and Oscar-winning hair and makeup people. <gasps> oh, how lovely. Oh, yeah. Hello, darling. <laughs> oh, what's he making? Mini double cup souffles. She's delightfully definite. She's not a, a woolly person about anything. Which makes my job a lot easier. Look at this. This is posh. She's great fun. Enormous fun, actually. Oh, She's an amazing hostess. 
She can fill her house with people, and I think when people leave, they're convinced that they spent the entire evening alone with Miranda. Look at that lovely goop. Yum. Pelicans! <laughs> 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 She is very, very kind. That's not a big enough word, but it is what I mean. Good word. It'll do. Excess or what? Yeah. You have no idea how much money they're paying me to do this, Miranda. <laughs> As promised, oh, a I'm little so taste. Excited. Pierre, you're here in spirit. That's the way to do it. And from a food point of view, yeah. I mean, when you started to get these, these wonderful parts, did your sort of eating out change? Well, you can afford change. to eat out a bit more, I suppose. Mm. I'm quite partial to a hotel breakfast. Oh, yeah. If there's time. I mean, I haven't done the full Japanese, but I could. Mm. Shall I? Do I want pickled herring at this time in the morning? <laughs> Maybe not. No, tomorrow maybe, but uh, today I will have something like huevos rancheros. Oh, it always sounds so delicious so and sexy, but I couldn't eat it. You can't. What is it you object to? Eggs. Eggs. Oh. The huevos. You could just have the rancheros. Just saying huevos. Huevos <laughs> rancheros. It puts you where it makes you feel silly. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Sorry. Simply translated from Spanish, huevos rancheros means eggs country style. The knack to this classic Mexican farmer's breakfast is all in preparing the sauce. Add the garlic and chili to your tomatoes and onions, and then this needs to soften to almost a pulp. Although I'm frying the eggs, you can scramble them too. Well, if it's done well, there's nothing better, you know, particularly if you've done a jog. Well, it gets you going in the morning, doesn't it? A jog and chilies. <laughs> yeah, it gets you going. Yeah, yeah. You know, and keeps you going. Whilst I'm adding coriander, you can throw in avocado, but for that extra bite, simply keep in the chili seeds. It's quite a heavy duty breakfast. It's, you know, the eggs with the beans, with the tomatoes, with the. With the... Yeah. Tortilla, fantastic. Oh, I'd start the day with a mango every day of my life if oh, I could. Oh, aren't they beautiful? God, mango. That was something that seemed incredibly out of the way and special, you know, it was, it was like a really celebration yeah. fruit to have. The art of exotic fruit salads is stay seasonal and befriend a very good greengrocer. Tell me, I'm thinking about the film parts you've had. Mm. I mean, they've been absolutely amazing. I mean, you've actually, I mean, you've been nominated for what, two Oscars yeah. for BAFTA. Yeah. Got, and I got, I got one BAFTA. So this was for. And um, that was for Damage. That was for Damage. Yeah. Which was your favourite of these? I don't know. I always say, which is very practical, I suppose. I always prefer what I'm doing at the time. Um, I hope I prefer what I'm doing at the time. I do like comedy, though. You know. I mean, if I can be, if I can be doing that, I think. But it's, with Black it's Adder, a bless, yeah. I mean, certainly, which is the comedy role that I probably know you best in. Yeah. That the comedy almost seemed to be happening around you because you were this very. I mean, you were constantly chopping people's heads off. Well, that that's right. I mean, she's um, she power mad, isn't she? And, <laughs> and it could happen at any time. So there's the, you know, that the the fear. Uh, which sort of caused titches of laughter, you know, because everybody around her is so terrified of what she might do, you know, yeah. sort of walking on eggshells, literally. Oh, it's an eggshell, sorry. Um, yeah, just kidding. It's up to you. Either you can shut up, or you can have your head cut off. There's been parts that um, you've actually declined as well. well. I mean, there was the... Name one. Oh, you're going to, aren't you? Yes. Fatal attraction. Well, me and whose army? I mean, I think probably many people did. Probably was it? Was it the sort of? Do it really? Sort of demonising of 
of lady kind that I, um, I didn't really love. I'm sure people would say to me, oh, lighten up, it's a good movie. But, um, you know, I just sort of... It's also, it's not what you need. Uh, having just played somebody who um, the press are going to say is a murderer, you know, using a motive word, yeah. i.e. Ruth Alice, the last thing you want to do is then maybe somebody brandishing a knife, but, you know... A bunny boiler. A bunny boiler, mm -hmm. yes, all that. I remember at the Oscars, even the clip they chose <laughs> from Tom and Viv was me getting a knife out. You know, there was one tiny moment where she gets a knife out, and this is something to do with Viv's sense of humour, you know, but, um, but actually I thought, well, there you are, they just want me to be a knife brandisher, really. That's, that's what they'd like best in the world, if I just carry on murdering people. And... Time to sum up Miranda's life with her final feast. Hey, the final feast. The final feast. What would you like me to do? Old-fashioned polenta mm -hmm. with... You're putting a fried egg on top. I am. And some white truffle. Yes. Heaven. Scallops. Yes. With just, just griddled with a little bit of lemon. Yes. Beautiful cheeses. Sheep and goat. Yes. And then little panna cotta. What give you flavours that with? Um, lavender flowers and jasmine oil. There's this, this, this little bite, this touch yes. of, of, of sharpness. Scorpio, you see. Scorpio rising. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> I was thinking how you choose your parts. They've all got that little bit of... String in the tail. Yes, yes. <laughs> OK, well, when this boils, then I'll put in the polenta. It's got to be runny. Yes. But it's that strange thing that it turns into Vesuvius when you, you know, you pour the polenta <laughs> yes. in. And yeah. there's... Do you love the smell of them? Oh, yes, I do. I do. What does that say about me? That I'm earthy. Oh, small and misshapen. <laughs> I think a scallop you cook in for seconds rather than minutes. And simple. Four times water mm -hmm. to the quantity of polenta. Now, if you would like to fry an egg, Ooh. I'm not feeling... You're not feeling eggy, no. Any tips? Don't stand too close to the blender. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be golden and delicious. Perfect. It's a little... Now, you want a dressing for your salad? Please. Oh, look at the colour of this. It's like a jewel. That's so, nice bitter nice. leaves with a slightly sweet dressing. Yes. Bitter because it is bitter to leave the earth. And sweet? Because of the joys to come. This is jasmine and lavender panicle. I have had this. And it was a moment for me. It was an epiphany. The lavender and the jasmine. Mm. Yeah, Big clafouti. Yes, I mean, I, I can't even remember what's in it. I just love the word. It's Yorkshire figs. pudding with big one. <laughs> That'll do. And I said I didn't like batter. What's going on? Anyway, look at that. Heavenly. Miranda Richardson's final feast, including crab cakes, polenta with a fried egg and truffle, seared scallops, and fig clafouti. It's heavenly to be here. Well, tuck in, I must yes. say. Yes, cheers. Bum. Absolutely. You can have four or five friends. OK, well, if I'm going to see everybody that I already know and love up there, then I can have people I don't particularly know. So there's a chap I would have liked to have met. He's called Wharton Escherich. He was a sculptor and a theatre designer. I would like Brunel. 
The Brunello. And, and that would mean we'd have to get on to the cigars, of course, because he was a bit of a cigar man. Oh, wasn't cigar he? We'd have, so it would be a nice long meal. And I've got to get another girl now. Or maybe I'll just keep the guys to myself. What do you think? It's your choice. Absolutely. Um, do you mind if I take him to pudding? I'm sorry. Just, I mean... I know. No, I it's know. fine. It's the last okay. night. It's fine. I just can't resist it. Well, I'll have a crab cake then. Look at that. With extra mayo. Do we care? Why should you care? No, it's the no, this it's the is last one. Do what we like. You can Eat with our fingers if we want to. Do you like one of these? No, I'm fine. Thank I'm, I'm, God, I'm, I'm sorry. for me then. Are you enjoying yourself? I am. It, it, I'm already in heaven, Nige. You know that. Thank you so much for this and toast you. Miranda Richardson, thank you very much for being my guest on A Taste of My Life. Call me again. A few Thai flavours to get those taste buds whirring next on BBC Two on Ready Steady Cook. And later, another actress from a famous theatrical family, Amelia Fox, shares her story on Who Do You Think You Are? That's at 10 to 4. Traditionally, you get a wish if you get this right. He's going like lace. Um, ow, 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 ow. Oh. 